What's going on boys and girls? Today we're going to talk about what I learned buying 20 cars for hire car in five weeks. The lessons I have learned. First of all, if you don't know who I am, my name is Glendon Cameron and this is the Money Lab where we conduct money experiments on how you can make money. And I'm going to go through what I went through with hire car and the lessons I have learned two months in into the car rental business. Lesson number one, buying your cars. How you buy your cars, how you acquire your cars is super important. One of the things I have learned is the smallest things can come back and bite you. Number one, I bought a few cars that were wrecked and I did not know that they were wrecked. And this created issues later on, such as one car, the trunk would just fly open. The car is fine otherwise, other than the trunk was flying open and I had to have a new trunk hatch installed and that fixed the problem. Number two, your better deals can be your worst problems. Uh, I bought a lot of cars. You know, I did some calculations. I bought more cars in five weeks than I bought in my entire lifetime. I've bought like 12, maybe 14 cars in my lifetime and I bought 20 cars in five weeks. So it was ridiculously compressed. So the first thing going on with buying your cars is you need to do a complete safety check. You first of all, you need to um, open and close all doors. Make sure that they open and close properly. If the doors are kind of closing kind of funny, that's a sign that the car has been wrecked. You need to let up all the windows, let them all down. If it has a sunroof, you need to open that. And on the road test, you need to drive like a maniac. Like if you take the car on the road test and you're just driving it like you normally drive and you're not a speeder, this is not how your renters are going to drive your cars. You need to accelerate and then slam on the brakes. That needs to be part of your road test because this is what renters are going to do. And if you don't do that, this stuff will come back to bite you because uh, one car that I kind of learned this on, I did it and I slammed on the brakes and the front started vibrating, which means the rollers needed to be replaced and the dealer to his credit, he fixed that and the car is fine. So you need to be really, really rough on your road test because if that's how your renters are going to drive your cars. The second thing that I've learned about renting cars on hire car is the overwhelming majority of people are kind and decent. They will rent your car. They will not damage it. And when they're done with it, they'll bring it back. That's the first segment. The second segment are the people who will get over on you. And this is how it starts. Now, as we go on to it, I'm going to pick up some new cars this week and every, you know, it's after the holiday. So I should be able to get my GPS kill switch. If you're renting a car on hire car, you're going to need GPS kill switch. You're not going to need just a GPS tracker because there are many people who just have trackers on it. Essentially, a tracker lets you know where the car is, but you want the GPS kill switch and I'm going to tell you why. I had someone who thought that I had turned off a car and this was someone I was trying to contact and she immediately contacted me. Um, this you're going to need the GPS kill switches for the second category of people on hire car. All right, look, look at it. who are the people renting cars? The people renting cars are the people who cannot buy a car for one reason or another. So your population is going to have a higher level of bogues. Uh, these are going to be people who will try to get over. And this has happened to me about four times. What happens is they'll be late two days and then they will go four days. And next thing you know, they'll be up to nine days. And these people will ride your car every day. They will wear it out. They will put mileage on it and they will not pay you. And they'll just get over until the final thing. So this is until I get the GPS kill switches. And this is one of the process I've learned how to get my car back. And essentially 
uh, what I will do going forward until the, you know, because essentially the new cars will have the GPS kill switches. But the older cars, the minute they're two days late, I'm going to send them a certified letter saying bring my car back. Because this is what I have to do in the state of Georgia to activate the stolen car law. In the state of Georgia, depending, like, once again, you, you do a stolen car report, your car is going to be turned over to the detective and the detective's going to know the law. So essentially, you need to send them a certified letter saying bring my car back soon. I'm probably going to do this on the first date that they're late. So essentially, this activates the law because once they or five, once they, you sent the certified letter to them and they don't return the car within five days, then you can put a stolen police car, stolen car alert on them, which essentially is called theft by conversion. Theft by conversion is that someone has taken your property and refused to give it back. And what will happen is it will be entered into the police system as a stolen car. So if they're driving it, they get pulled over, they will be arrested. And that's one of the things I had to learn because uh, I've had a car that was stolen. I'm going to do the poor story a little later. And essentially, I've had to call the police two times to get my cars back. And essentially, I think we're running up on the third one because this girl is just she's like she don't want to bring the car back because she needs the car. And once again, this goes back to your population. These people need a car, but they don't have any money. And once again, there's a good group of people on hire car. And this is one of the things that works with hire car. If you rent a, the first time you rent your car on hire car, it's the longest time it will take for your car to rent. After that first time, it enters into the hire car algorithm and it'll rent the second time much, much quicker. So essentially, if you got someone who has your car and they're just riding around and not paying you, they're costing you money because if they would bring it back, you can rent it to someone who would pay you. So this is one of the issues that happens. But essentially, in most states, to activate the theft by conversion law, you got to send them a demand letter. And in the state of Georgia, it's five days. I don't know what it is for your state because every state's different, but that's what you have to do to get your car back in cases where people just don't want to bring your car back because they need it. The third thing that I've learned with hire car is people will damage your car. This is just part of the rental car business. Uh, this is one of the reasons that I will never, ever rent my BMW or my Porsche on hire car or Toro. I would be pissed off if someone brought me my Porsche back with the rear bumper hanging off of it. I would be, I would want to put my hands on them. So once again, if you're one of those people who are seduced about renting your car out on Turo to pay your car payment, be well advised that uh, I've had a car, I had a Camry where it came back, the bumper was hanging off. I had another Camry, the girl, to her credit, she told me it was just, it didn't impact the car, it's just a little, just scratches. So that was fine. I've had another car where someone lost the keys. And I had another car brought back where there's a hole in the mirror. The mirror's made of plastic. There's a hole in the mirror. There's a dent on the side. There's a scrape on the front um, bumper flare. And this is only after two months. Now, granted, I have more cars than the average person because essentially when you get to 20 cars, things are going to accelerate. You're going to have more issues. You're going to have more things. You're going to have more experiences because you have more cars. So essentially you can rent a car on Turo and let's say you have one or two cars, right? You can rent one or two cars on Turo and never have any of these things happen for many months. You could just get good renter after good renter. But because I've had so many cars, also we're going to talk about this in point four, buying the right cars for the platform. Essentially, I bought four cars for Toro and I bought four cars for hire car. The, the cars that went on hire car rented really quick, but what I found out was the cars that I bought for Toro, except for the Porsche Cyan, just sat. I remember that BMW sat in my yard for almost three weeks before it rented out. And then, 
the Range Rover, and this is another thing, and this is something you should know about Turo. Once your car gets in the Turo algorithm, even if you snooze it, it'll still be booked. I had I got to call them because I've had two fifty dollar cancellation fees applied to a car that was snooze because I had a long term renter on hire car, and this is something else. You don't want to have your car on hire car and at Toro at the same time. This invariably happens. You will get someone who will rent the car on Toro in the same time that someone's renting the car on Toro, someone on hire car is going to want it those same days. And if you rent the car on hire car, someone on Toro is going to want the car the same exact time frame. I don't know what it is, but this has happened to me like seven, eight times, and it's annoying as hell. I got other cars there that are available, but you want that car. And their Range Rover, a lot of people wanted that car, and I had to cancel several uh, trips because it was rented out on a long-term rental on hire car. So essentially, I ended up removing the Range Rover from Toro because they kept booking it even though it was snoozed. And it was hella the knowing. So that's something you should be aware of. Also, another thing you should understand about renting cars on, on the platform. There is a YouTuber, Car Air, Car BNB. He hands down gives you the realest information about renting cars out on Toro and Hire Car than any other YouTuber. He leaves nothing out. He's got a video, one car was stolen, three wrecks in one week, and this is an accurate portrayal of the worst side of renting cars on any platform. It is the worst side because I've had a car stolen, I had a car, I had to call the police three times for the stolen car, which I did get back, and I had to call the police twice to encourage renters to bring my car back because they weren't paying me. So. This is going back to the GPS kill switch. You're absolutely going to need the GPS kill switch on hire car because of the population base that you're renting to. And also many people feel that having a rental car and not paying you is not that big of a deal. They will keep your car, not pay you and clown and make up all kind of excuses. But until the police, and this is why you want to send out that demand letter because, um, uh, Recently, I got a girl, she was paying just fine, paying just fine, and essentially she got two days late and she kept running into this two day late, late cycle. And this, this is something you should be aware of on hire car. Once they're two days late and then it stretches to four, I guarantee you it's gonna go from four to six to six to eight. I guarantee it because they're not feeling pressure. So essentially I sent out two demand letters on the second day they were late because this is to activate the law because essentially I have a feeling that before I get because essentially uh, the new cars I'm going to buy this week I have a people to put my GPS kill switches in and I'm going to have to get cars in put the kill switches in and it's probably going to take two three months to get them all set up but I, I have someone to do that and I have a feeling that someone's going to rip one of my cars. They're going to get my demand letter and they're going to steal because essentially they need the car. This is the problem. They understand they're fully 100% aware that they should be paying you. That is not even in dispute, but they need the car and they will keep your car. And as long as they don't feel pressure, they will keep your car. So essentially what I've learned to cut down my lost days, because essentially you're losing money. On that Porsche, I lost about $2,500 in potential rental income because this clown, because like the story is going to blow y'all mind, but this clown was playing games. So essentially another thing I've learned is you're going to need two keys and this is going to come in with the GPS kill switch. You're going to need two keys. You're going to need one key to give to the renter and you're going to need one key in case the renter doesn't comply because this is going to be my GPS kill switch procedure. After the first day, the car is shut off. It's going to be shut off on the second day. The, the first day I see it's you 24 hours late, the car instantly will be shut off and I will ask the renter to leave the car, the key in the car. If they don't, 
then you're going to have to have your second key to go get your property and rent it out. Because essentially, this is what I'm seeing. Your cars on hire car will rent out really, really quick. At the moment, I have two cars in the shop. There's something else we're going to talk about. And two cars back. So I have 16 cars rented out between Toro, because I got the Mercedes on Toro. I have 16 cars rented out. And essentially, this week, those other two cars that came back, they'll be gone. And then once I get my two cars back from the shop, then they will rent out pretty quickly. So I fully expect to have about 20, 19 cars rented out by Friday. And essentially, because uh, this is the difference between Turo and Hire Car. Turo, they rent the car for two, three days, they bring it back, and that's it. Hire Car, they will keep your car for months. Uh, the car I got back that was damaged, for, a guy had it for six weeks. And eventually he stopped paying and I convinced him to bring it back and he did to his credit. And one of the things that you will also understand is this is not something that's going to disappear. Because once again, looking at the population that you're renting these cars out, these are people because uh, there was a study that like 30 percent of the people who want to drive for Uber don't have a qualified car. And I can tell you that hire car doesn't have enough cars on the platform. When I joined hire car going through the pages, there's 20 cars per page. There were 17 pages of cars. Now today there's 12. So that meant that 20 cars, 100 cars that used to be on hire car. And once again, on hire car, when the car is rented, you can't see it in the listing results unless you're the owner. So 100 cars, since I've been doing this, have come off the platform. And people, they're, they're not adding enough people on the platform. So I see this opportunity growing for years and years to come because of the current pandemic, a lot of people's credit got trashed and a lot of people will not be able to afford a car and they're going to rent cars. Also, something else too. You will have people who have cars who will rent a car on hire car because they don't want to put the miles on their, their main car. So they will rent a car to keep putting the miles because I've had like one, two, and four people and they're actually the best payers, incidentally, that's funny. Uh, four people who rented the car because, you know, and they rented, the, they rented the $35 a day car. They rented a practical car to do DoorDash or whatever they needed to do. They rented the cheapest car. And also, another thing that you will find out on the hire car, you will have people who should be renting the $35 car I have a girl who's renting a Range Rover for 70 bucks a day and she does lift. She does lift in a Range Rover. I don't know, it's kind of crazy. But you will find out that people will be on the app and they will look for days because there are many people on the app who have Sentras, Priuses, nice normal cars for 40 to 55 bucks a day. And essentially what I have found out is I've got two BMW 330s, a 330, 335i, I got a 550i, I got a 535i, I got a 530. All of my BMWs went out two days after I put them on the platform. So essentially you've got people and essentially I price my stuff because you got to play around with pricing. You could drive a Sentra for $55 a day, or you could drive a BMW for $55 a day. What you gonna do? So a lot of people will choose. And I've actually had people who are sitting there waiting for me to get cars back. They've stalking my listing. They're like, hey, when you gonna get the car back? Let me know, I want that BMW, I want this, I want that. So it is its own little economy. It's its own little um, world in renting cars. But once again, People are going to damage your car. Number two, you're going to need two keys. You're going to need the GPS kill switch and you need to buy the appropriate car for the platform. 
once and this is something i've noticed with turo and hire car once your car is rented the first time it rents out the second time much quicker i'm getting the mercedes back tomorrow and i have a feeling it will rent out pretty quickly after that but you have to be emotionally detached i view each of these cars as workers that go out into the marketplace and they bring me money back and that's their job and this month i'm going to see what my daily rate is because i feel because once again i have a few people who are not paying so this is messing up my daily rate and i should have those cards back this week because the demand letters went out we had a holiday you know the postman doesn't run on holidays so uh that clock will start ticking and once they get these letters and i'm gonna let them know i'm about to file because essentially once i send a letter i can file the police report and then it goes in as a stolen car and the cops will call them so i should get those cars back um tuesday and then re-rent them to someone else who's going to pay me but you have to be detached because I was annoyed when the guy brought my Camry back with the bumper hanging off of it, but I wasn't pissed off as I would have been if someone had brought back my BMW or, or a Porsche like that. Like my Porsche, that's my baby. That's, that's my fun car. That's my, I mean, I'm telling you, I love that car. Sometimes I get in it, I don't even turn the radio on because I just listen to the exhaust and that, that's my fun car. And I will never, ever rent that out on Toro unless, and this is the only way I would rent my car on Toro, that Porsche. I would create a special category on Toro called Fast and Furious. And I would rent that car for 250 to 300 bucks a day and I would not rent it to anyone under 30 years of age. And that's a big if and also I would have acquired another Porsche that would be the only way it's like all right I got two Porsches and I got the turbo so I can go ahead and let the that would be the only way that I would rent that car out on, on uh, Turo the only way only way and essentially you know because um, this is my second Porsche. And I remember when I bought the Porsche, they told me, they said they'd become addictive and they do because I do see myself in the future buying a few more. And I'm probably going to get the Cabriolet, the drop top turbo. Uh, essentially, I kind of toured around with it. And they said, if I order it now, I'm looking at getting it in a year. <laughs> so that's kind of crazy. But once again, that would be the only way that I would rent that bad boy out. And it would be steep, like maybe even 350 a day. Maybe even 350 a day. And with a three day minimum rental. So every time that goes out, it brings back a thousand bucks. And also I would like, if this car is damaged, you know, if you have insurance, uh, we will place the claim with your insurance first. Uh, it would be really, really long run. Cause once again, also, what another thing I have learned is insurance on hire car is tricky. Essentially, I have a claim for the bumper. I have a claim for a lost key. I have a claim for gas. And essentially what they will send these claims to you, what I'm estimating is it's going to take three to four weeks for me to get those separate checks. So like if you're in a situation where you can potentially move, you want to have, uh, I've got an office address, so essentially I will be able to go ahead and have those claims in the future go to my office address because I'm, I'm moving. But any claim, they're going to look for any reason to deny. And one of the things you want to do is take pictures of everything. You want to take pictures of your rims. You want to take pictures of your doors. You want to take pictures. If you have a sunroof, you want to take a picture of your sunroof. You want to take a picture of each seat, you everything. Instead of like the five pictures of the front, the side and the rear, you probably want to take 30, 40 pictures, a picture of each tire, a picture of the bumper, a picture of the steering wheel, a picture of the driver's seat, the picture of the passenger seat, a picture of the rear seat, a picture inside the trunk, a picture of the outside of the trunk, a picture of your rim of your wheel wells, 
because let's say um, if you had a Dodge Hellcat, and a lot of people like to rent these out and use the launch control, and what will happen is the outside of your tire will look fine, but the inside of your tire would be bald. And you can go ahead and get your car back, and if you don't have documentation that your tires were fine before they rent it out, they're going to deny your claim. Because essentially, I want you to look at this insurance is a keep away game. We're going to do everything we can to not pay you. So essentially, I'm going to get paid for the bumper because they can't refute that because I got pictures of the car with the bumper intact and the bumper was clearly hanging off. And then I got an estimate for that and I should get uh, a reimburse for the key because he lost the key. And this is another reason that you want to have two keys people will lose keys. I have gotten three phone calls in the middle of the night. Hey, do you have an extra key? And the language in my, uh, the first time that happened, I did not know that Range Rover keys were $700 a piece. I did not know that. So the second key, I hit him up. I was like, Hey, it's $700. I hope you find that key because if you don't let him know up front. And he said, if he lost it, he was going to get another key. And uh, this is one of the people who has additional cars, so he's renting it because fun is a Range Rover. But yeah, these are the things I have learned. And also, everything I said in this video is not going to change. It's not going to change. People are still going to damage cars. People are going to still lose keys. Until I get the GPS kill switches in, people are going to still play the I'm not going to pay you, but I don't want to bring the car back game which is annoying as hell. Uh, like I said, I got one situation like that and essentially she's getting the letter probably tomorrow since it was a holiday. I, I just, you know, it, it's frustrating how you got to wait until a holiday for business to be back. But once she gets that letter and then once I file that police report and then let her know, then I'll get my car back. And until I get those GPS kill switches, this is something that's going to keep popping up. I just know it because many people will rent your car and they don't feel that they're really breaking the law. They feel that it's going to be some civil suit. But one of the things is if someone keeps your car and they don't pay you it is theft by conversion. They're actually stealing from you. They're using the car. They're depreciating the car and they're putting miles on the car and God forbid they wreck the car while they're not paying you. So then you've got all of these issues going on and you do have a few remedies. You could take them to small claims court. But once again, can you get blood from a rock? Because once again, you got to go to court. You got to sue them. You got to get them served. But if they don't have any money, is that really a good use of your time? That's something I struggle with because I've got two people that I should be suing, well, three for lost rent, lost rental, rental income. And I'm just sitting there like lessons learned because one of the things is once someone is late, you need to send out that letter the first day that they're late. So this starts the clock because essentially when you call the police, you can say, I sent the demand letter. I've got the green card back. Let's file this police report. And if they get caught driving that car, they will be arrested. And I have a feeling that's going to happen to somebody because many people don't see this for being the crime that it is. Many people are unfamiliar with the law. But once again, you know, I've learned a lot in two months and my first month income was six thousand in this month. We almost did fourteen thousand. I need to do some calculations to see what the maximum rent I can get for my current fleet. I think it's like 24,000 if everything is rented out for 30 days, I think, I'm not sure. But it's better than it was in the beginning because there was a week from hell where everything was breaking and there was all kinds of stuff. Also, repairs. Repairs are always gonna take longer than what they tell you. Uh, essentially, my guys, they were able to turn three repairs around the same day. And then this mini is being a nightmare. I'm never buying another mini because another thing, when you're buying your cars, 
you want to find something that's easy to fix. Like, believe it or not, these older BMWs are much easier to fix than a lot of these new cars. They're really easy to fix and they're, they're, they're comparably cheap because the starter went out in one of the Acras and also this Acra was in an accident where the hood won't open. So it's like 800 bucks for all of that, for the starter and the hood. And until I snoozed that car, I had like three people requested it this weekend. So one of the things that you have to understand and you have to acknowledge is that, you know, this is a rough business. It is a rough business. Enterprise, Hertz, Avis, National are going through the same thing on a much larger level, much larger level. And it's just this is one of the reasons that they have these contracts and this was why they want to have a credit card on file. And this is why they charge you these deposits, because they know that it's going to be really hard to get this money after you mess up their car. And this is one of the things that I am thinking about doing on my nicer cars. I got to talk with higher car and like, hey, you're going to have to do a thousand dollar deposit in case, you know, because uh, essentially uh, these are some other lessons. I haven't enacted that because I don't know. Can you do that with higher car? And is that permissible? Because uh, I will give you an example. The young lady who rented my BMW and ran over a pothole and flattened two tires. Uh, she was under contract to rent a Camry. And I could have started that rental and got that money. But that would have been fraud because she never would have picked up the car. So I didn't do it. I really, really wanted to do it. Because essentially when hire car charges them, that money comes off their credit card. But I didn't do it. I just like left it alone and uh, I, haven't, I haven't heard from her. But you will have some really good renters and you will have some really crappy renters. And the game is to manage your fleet so you have your cars in the hands of the good renters. Like right now, like I said, I've got um, two cars in, four cars. I have 16 cars rented out and I have 12 good renters. And essentially, once I get these other four cars back, I should be getting, you know, because it's, it's fleet management. Because essentially, what you don't want to do is let them get too far with being late. Because uh, there was a guy here on YouTube who used to do hire car videos and he stopped. And car Airbnb used to do Toro videos and he stopped. And I have a reason, I have a feeling the reason they stop is they're no longer doing the business because if you don't treat this like a business, it's going to break you because once you, you cannot be emotionally attached to these cars, you cannot because they're going to be used, they're going to be driven, they're going to be abused. And that's just the business. That's the business. And that's why I am really glad. Also, if you're going to get in the business, I would suggest you start off with a car that is paid off. Because let's say you go ahead and you go out and finance a car and you put it on Turo. And then the third week, it's in an accident. You're going to lose money because they're not going to pay you what you paid for that car. You paid sales tax, you paid dealer's fees, and you drove that car off the lot so it depreciated. So essentially, you're going to take a 10 to 20% hit it where you're going to lose money if you buy a new car you buy a used car you buy the used car like essentially uh the bmw 330 i bought that correctly I only 7200 dollars uh the 335i that was 8200 bucks i got a 530 i only paid 7200 bucks so i bought these cars correctly because you have to buy the cars correctly I didn't buy like the Porsche. I bought that incorrectly. I thought it was going to, it would have did well on Turo, but then it broke. And then the Range Rover, the Porsche is, I spent the most money. I spent almost $20,000 on that car. I'm not doing that anymore because this is the game that you have to play on higher car. Give you an example. I got a BMW for 7,200 bucks, right? I can rent that for $49. 50 bucks minus 15%. And when I say minus 15%, that's the highest pay plan you can get on hire car where you get 85% of the rental 
and they get 15%. So I'm getting almost $42 a day on this car and I've got cars out for 55 and I got cars out for 60 that have been rented for a whole month. So at $50 per day, it's 1500 per month. So minus high car, I'll probably get like 1300, but essentially five months, that car is paid for five months, five months. How many months in the year? There's 12. So that if I can get a car for 7,200, 78,000, I can get that car paid off in half a year. And at that point, it becomes a cash cow. And also, since I've now got, you know, been in the business, I'm going to rent the cars for two years before I get rid of them. I was going to rent the car for one year, but if I rent the car for two years, this enables me to get better cars because I see it is very, very hard to consistently find cars at 72 to eight, under 8,000. It's real hard to consistently buy a good car that is not trashed. And in the future, I'm probably going to rent, move this up to, because a game changer is gonna be for me is when I get my dealer's license, because I'm waiting on them to do some things before I can even apply. And once I get my dealer's license, then I can buy a $10,000 car, which is gonna be a 12 or $14,000 car on the car lot. So once I move it up to 10,000, I'm gonna get better cars, have less issues, and we'll have a better intake process because I go to auction, I buy the car, and then I get the title. Then I take that title to the DMV and I get my tag the next day, and then I can put this car, because this, this is another issue. Paper tags are trash. Uh, I've bought cars from de car dealers who use the paper tags, and the paper tags come off, they get lost, all kinds of stuff happens with paper tags. Paper tags are trash. So essentially, if you buy a car with paper tag, I suggest that you take it off, take some clear tape, and go around that bad boy a few times, especially around the holes, and then put it back on. Because it gets wet or something, it's going to come off, and it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a big, big problem. But that's all I've learned in these last two months. I've learned a lot, and it's going to influence you know, how I do things in the future. But once again, I would not, just me, I know that some people are doing it and it's working out, but for me, from a personal standpoint, I would start off with two or three cars, see how I like it, learn your lessons before adding more. Because one of the things, one of the reasons that I've had all these stories and stuff is I bought a lot of cars fast. I'm at where many Toro people have not gotten into to two, three, four years. Uh, I've been watching a lot of a lot of Toro hosts don't even have 20 cars. And by the end of this month, I should have 23 cars. And then that's in August, I should have another three cars. So by the end of August, going into September, I should have 25, 24, 25 cars. And each car represents uh, $1,000 to $1,500 a month in revenue. So just depends upon what kind of cars I have and what's going on, but we should be close to $30,000 a month in revenue and then expenses are going to be like my car insurance is like 1200 bucks per for my current fleet. So I add five more cars. That's going to move me up to $1,500 for car insurance. And then I have that $600 car payment. So that's going to be my expenses are going to be like $1,800. And then the rest is going to be money I can use to buy more cars. Because essentially, uh, I've had people who don't know what profit is, if profit slapped them across the face, who think that if you buy a car, and you put it on Turo, and the car generates more than this car payment, that's money that you can just slide in your pocket. Essentially, you're running your business in the red and you're misallocating funds because you should be paying off these cars as quick as possible because once the car is paid off, then it becomes a true cash cow. But once again, a lot of people don't think like that. And once again, that's going to catch up with you because right now in Hawaii 
in DC, car rentals are going through the roof. And that's good for people on Turo. But guess what? It's not going to last. It's going to it's going to come back to normal. And as people get vaccinated and more people and we start to come back to a normal life, a lot of this stuff is going to disappear and it's going to be really, really hard for these hosts who are going to get addicted to making that money. Because uh, one of the reasons that I decided to go with Hardcar and Hardcar has all of his issues. They've got issues with the software. They got issues with the claim process. One of the things that I've noticed with hire car is if I rent a car on Friday, I'm probably not going to see that car for two to three weeks. On Turo, I rent a car. It goes out for two or three days. It's coming back. Then you got to wash it. Then if they didn't put gas in it, you got to gas it up. So hire car from a turnover standpoint is way less intensive than Turo way less because I'm probably, you know, as we go on this journey, it just determines because once I get up to 50,000 a month, that opens up the door because let's say I can buy four cars for hire car and one car for Toro because $10,000 at a car auction can get you a 12 to $14,000 car. And once again, once I get my dealer's license, I got to find out the best options auctions to go to because I have figured out a few things. And once again, I don't care who puts a video up on here until you buy the car and you put it on the platform, you don't know how it's going to perform. And that's why I say start off with cars that are paid for because paid off cars are easier to get out of than the car that you have financed. Because let's you finance a car that isn't performing well, you're going to lose money, get rid of that. Whereas if you pay cash and bought the car correctly, um, I'm getting rid of the mini. I'm getting rid of, I don't know. I don't know if I'm getting rid of the Acura, but I'm definitely getting rid of the mini and I'm getting rid of two of the Range Rovers. So once I get those titles, I can turn those, the two Range Rovers, I can turn into two cars. So we will see how that goes. But once again, that's all I got for you guys. These are the things that I've learned and it's an interesting journey and I'm not going to give it up because the potential is staggering. The potential is staggering. And once again, just looking at higher car, when I started, had 16 pages of cars, now they're down to 12, no 17, now that's, that's 100 cars, including mine, because I like, literally I've got 16, yeah, I got 16, I got 15 rented because I sold a Porsche and the Mercedes, I got 16 cars rented. One's rented out on Toro and 15 cars on hire car. And then I've got two cars back and I've got two cars in the shop. So we will see how that goes. But that's all I got for you guys. I got some new training that's probably gonna come up in the middle of the month. Uh, we're gonna be dealing with credit and we're gonna be dealing with business coaching. So look out for that. Don't buy anything right now. Just give me some time to get that together. And if you're in the art of holding, you will get it. If you're in the corporate toolbox, you will get it. I got to get my assistant up to speed, but that's all we got. And I will see you guys in the next one.